Hello there and welcome. In the previous episode, we created the UI for our building system. So now we can select an item and build it. But at the moment, there is no limit to the amount of items we can construct. There is no restriction. So we want to deal with this problem. So first we're going to create a new object and we're going to name it resource manager. On this item, we're going to add a script with the same name. This should be a singleton because we want to be able to use it in different parts of our code. So let's find one of our singletons and just copy the code. I think we have the sound manager. So we're going to copy this part. And also the awake. Let's just remove this part over here and rename this. So now it's a singleton. The next thing we want to do is add the first resource that we're going to have. Later, we're going to add more options for resources and obviously it depends on your game. Some games have a limited amount, others have many different resources. We are going to have one resource at this point just so we can start working with the resource manager. Later, we can add more resources. So we're going to have a public int credits and this will be a very basic resource like money or spice or anything that is gatherable that you will be able to spend on your items. Then we also want to have an enum with the resource type so we can use it in our code. And we're going to add our first resource, credits. Later, of course, we can add more over here if we want. First, we also want the method to get the amount of credits, for example, to display them if we want. So let's have a public void or public int get credits. And this will simply return the credits, okay? And this is just so we can get it and maybe display it on the UI later. We don't really need it at this point. Now we want to have a method public void increase resource. It's going to receive a resource type and also an integer. Then inside we're going to have a switch statement that is going to check what is the resource and increase it accordingly. So if the resource is credits, it's going to increase the credits by the amount to increase. And we're going to do the same thing for decreasing the resource. So decrease resource. And we're simply going to change it to decrease the amount. Now we also want to be able to update our UI when the resource is changed. So either increased or decreased by creating some kind of event that listeners will be able to listen to. And when this is going to happen, then they're going to get updated and know how to react. So over here, we're going to add And then over here inside of these methods, after we increased or decreased, we're basically going to invoke this event. And then each listener that listens to this event will get notified that the resource is changed and it should react in some way. Now inside the by slot script, we want to register to this event because we want the buy slot to be notified when there is an event, when there is a change in the resources. So over here, right? So we register to the event when the script is enabled and we 
Stop listening when the script is disabled. So these are built-in methods that are called when the script is enabled and disabled. Now we are going to generate this method. And before we add the logic for this method, we're going to create a way to access the database easily. So we're going to create a new object. We're going to name it database manager with a script. It will be a singleton as well. So let's just copy this. And this way we can simply access the database from the singleton instead of always providing a reference to the database to different scripts, right? So over here, And also, if we have multiple databases, we can add all of them over here and simply access them via this database manager. So this is the objects database. And then maybe we also want another database. Now we go back into the by slot method and we can implement this method. So inside this handle resources method, we're simply going to react each time a resource has been changed. And what we want to do is basically to update the UI. So if the resource changed and we can now build the item, we want to know it in real time. So we are doing this using these events instead of checking it inside the update method, right? Instead of doing update if resource has been changed, then make this resource available or something, right? It's not efficient. We don't want to call the update method all of the time. This is going to consume a lot of memory and it's not good for the game. Instead, we can use events. So now we want to go over all the items that we have inside the database and check if the requirement is actually met. And this way we can set them to be available or not. Now, if you remember inside of our database manager, inside the database itself, we have our objects and inside the object data, we have the name, the ID, we have our prefabs and we have the requirements. So the requirements is an object that is named build requirements and inside we have a resource and an amount. And if we go to the database, we can see it over here, requirements, right? Right now we don't have any requirements, but this is the element that we can add requirements for this object. And if we add an element, we can see resource and amount. So we basically want to loop over all of these items and then check if we have enough resources and then update the UI so we can set the available sprite or the unavailable sprite. So we basically just want to get this one item, this buy slot item, according to the database ID. So if this buy slot is, let's say, on the command center, then we're going to get the database ID for the command center, and we're going to search for it inside the database manager and check if the command center is available. But of course, this buy slot is going to be on all the different items. So we're going to access the database using the ID, get the object data, and then we're going to basically check all of the different build requirements because we can have more than one requirement, right? Maybe we need some wood and we also need some stone. So we're going to loop over all of the requirements and then we're going to check if the amount of resources that we have at the moment is smaller than the amount required by this item, we're going to set requirement met to be false and we're going to break. If all of these requirements are false or even if one of them is false, it's going to break and it's going to be set to false. So the available will become false and we are going to know that this item is not available. Only if all of them are true, 
then we're going to skip this and it's going to be set to be true because it is set to be true in the beginning. So this way we can check if all of the requirements are true or not and update the UI accordingly. Now we need this method to get the amount of resources we have. So let's generate it. And it's going to get generated inside the resource manager. And over here, we basically want to get the amount of resources. So it's not going to be a string. It's going to be a resource type. So if we are trying to get the amount of resources for a specific resource, it's going to check which kind of resource are we interested in. And if it's credits, it's simply going to return the credits, right? The amount of credits, and it's going to return it out of this method. So over here, we can get the amount, and then we're simply going to compare the amount to the required amount, and we're going to check if it's smaller. Then over here, we also want to provide with the actual resource that we're interested, right? The required resource. But at the moment, the required resource is a string and we need to provide it with a resource type. So we're going to replace it with a resource type, resources type. Okay, so now it's going to be a resources type resource. And this is what is going to get saved inside of this build requirements. And over here, we can get it, we can provide it and get the amount for it. And then we can compare it to the actual required amount and check if it's true or false. So now each time we're going to increase or decrease a resource and it doesn't matter which resource, it can be credits, it can be anything. As soon as it's increased or decreased, we're going to send this event and then our buy slots are going to listen to this event. They're going to respond and they're going to check if the availability has changed Maybe now we don't have enough resources for this item. Maybe now we do have enough resources for this item. So this is what is going on over here. Now we want to also decrease the actual credits when we buy an item, because at the moment we are not decreasing it and we can buy as many items as we want. So we're going to open our placement state script. This one, this placement state, and we're going to scroll down to the on action method and under this index line we're going to add resource manager instance and of course it's a very long name but this is just so it will be obvious of course you can use a shorter name and we're going to provide it with the database reference objects data and with the actual index. So selected object index, because we have all of this over here, we're providing it with the database, with the actual index. So now we can send the actual object into this method, into the resource manager and remove resources, or we can rename it to decrease resources, right? So instead of remove, let's rename it to be decrease resources based on requirement. Now let's generate this method and it's going to be generated inside the resource manager again. So over here, we're simply going to loop over all the requirements and remove the necessary things. So for each, so we're going to loop over all the requirements of this item and we're going to use the decrease resources method that we have over here, decrease resources. We need to provide it with the resource and the amount. So the resource is the rec resource and the amount is the rec amount. Now, of course, you can also take all of this and place it inside the placement system and over here inside the placement state and call it over here instead of this thing. 
but I think it's wiser to use this method inside the resource manager because this is more related to the resource manager. And if we want to do some changes, we need to do it over here instead of looking for it inside the placement state. So now that we have all of this, we can test this out and see if all of this is working. Now let's go back into the game. We're going to add a requirement for the command center. So we're going to add a new requirement. For now, the only resource that we have is credits. And we're going to say that the command center will cost us 150 credits, okay? Now we also want to add some credits to our actual player. So we're going to enter into our resources manager and we need to add the credits, but for now the resources manager, the credits are private. So we're simply going to add it over here, 100 or let's say 300. For now, let's just make it public so we can test this out. Of course, later we don't want to be able to access this via the inspector. Let's start with 300 credits. So we start with 300 credits and we know that the command center cost us 150. So we can basically build two of them and then it should make the command center unavailable. Now, another thing that we need to do is go to our command center by slot and remove this is available because it should not be available at the beginning. Well, it should be controlled by the by slot script, right? It should be controlled by this update availability UI, but this is not going to work because it's just going to check if is available is true. And this is available is going to be false in the beginning. So instead of calling this update availability UI, we need to call this handle resources changed, and then it's going to check the resources, and then it's going to call this method. So instead of calling this, we're going to call this thing. And also we can make this is available to be public because we should not see it in the inspector. We don't want to change it by mistake. There is no need for it to be public. Now, another thing that we need to take into consideration is that we still don't have any objects for the power plant. So when this is going to get called, it's going to look for this item and database but the database has no item and it's going to give us errors. So for now, let's just, let's say, remove it or maybe just disable the buy slot, okay? And well, let's just add this item for now without a prefab. So power plant, the ID will be one. The requirements will, let's say, be 100 although we won't be able to even buy it because we want to restrict it later to only when we have a command center we still don't have this option but this is just for testing so let's make it let's say 500 okay and we don't want to use this prefab let's just make it none okay and let's also make sure that these ones don't have it so let's disable the buy slot Another last thing that we want to do is to actually display the credits because at the moment they will only be available inside a resource manager. We want to add some kind of UI even just for testing. So over here inside this side panel, we're going to add some kind of, maybe inside the build system. No, inside the side panel, we're going to add the UI text mesh pro. We're going to expand it with alt. Then we're going to change it to be at the top. We're also going to drag these anchors. Now we're going to play around with this UI later, but this is just for testing. Over here, we're going to change it to something. We're going to set the size, maybe 24. We're going to position it in the center. And we may also want to change the font or maybe not but this will basically show us the amount of credits and now we need to connect it. So credits, now imagine you have more resources, you're going to have a text for each resource. So wood, stone, metal, things like that. We only have credits. So we're going to have this one thing over here and now inside the buy system or actually the resource manager, 
we want to have a reference to it. So let's say public text mesh pro UG UI credits UI. And we're simply going to update it each time there is a change in these resources. So we can either add it over here and set the credits, or we can do it again with this invoke. So we can simply say on enable, and we basically want to listen to this event from this script. So on resource changed, update UI, we're going to generate this method. And inside we're going to set this text to be credits. And now it's going to listen to this exact event the same way the buy slot is listening to this event, right? So we're going to do it the same way. Let's also add the on disable. And it's important to add the on disable because if the script is disabled, we don't want it to keep listening. Disable. We can also place it at the bottom and we're going to stop listening to it. So each time there is a change inside one of the resources, it's going to call this method. Now why this is, yes, because it's a string. So let's just, okay. So it's going to update the UI each time there is a change with the resource. And if you had more resources, you would just say, Let's say wood UI text and change the wood. Okay. And of course you can also do this inside the actual resources. So over here, you can do it this way. So each time there's a change in this exact resource, then it's going to update the, the UI. So there's a lot of ways to do it. It's really up to you. I like it this way. So now everything should work. We only need to connect this credits UI. So we're going to take our credits UI, let's say credits UI and drag it into the buy system, actually into the resources manager over here. So credits UI. And there is another thing that we need to do because the buy slot is going to update and call this handle resources changed at the start, but the resources manager is still not doing it. So the UI is not going to get updated at the beginning. So if we want to do this, let's say start and also call this update UI method at the start of the game. And now as soon as we start the game, we can see the UI over here getting updated to 300 credits. And if we try to construct this command center and we actually place it, it's going to decrease it by 150. And if you know simple math, it's going to leave us with 150 credits. So it's working. Then we can construct another one. And now we have zero credits and we cannot buy it any longer because we don't have enough credits. Now, if we gather more credits or maybe we do something, then it's going to increase the credits. And as soon as we have enough credits for something, it's going to be available again, and we're going to be able to construct it. Now let's also remove this build button because there is no need for it anymore. And we can also go to our UI manager and Actually, there is no need for the UI manager at this point because this is the only thing that we did. So we can also remove the UI manager and delete it from our game. If later we need a UI manager, we can just create the script all over again. But everything is done right now inside the resources manager and the buying system. So that's all for this episode. We still have some things to do with the buying system. For example, how do we at conditions. So for example, we want the power plant to only be available if there is a command center in our game. Or for example, when we construct this command center, then we are going to have more buildings available. So some buildings will be conditions for other buildings, right? RTS games have this option. And 
we do have other things. For example, we don't want to be able to build on things that are not buildings. For example, we know that we cannot build on top of buildings, but we can still build on top of units, right? It's going to move it for now, but we still don't want to allow this. So there's a few things that we need to do and we're going to cover it in the next episode. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe. You can become a member. It's going to support me a lot. You can get access to the Discord server to get support there. And you can also meet other people. So that's an option as well. So I'll see you next time.